Just relaxing. So what you got there? Uh, just holding up a laser so yeah. people can see things. You're worried about people not being able to see things? Well, yeah, it's about, you know, people need to be able to see, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have a light in here, but mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I'm just going to stand here, lean up against this post, and hold this lantern so that everybody can see. Oh, well, guess your day's set then. Yeah. It's always good to have a schedule. That's right. My arm is getting a little bit tired, I will admit. Think there's any way to make it easier? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know if we had a hand to take the place of your hand. What's your hand? Sure. <laughs> there you go. It's shift work. <laughs> well, how about for an even better idea? Yeah. We make a hand. You've already made one. <laughs> well, yes, but this is a normal hand. Yeah. And this is the final episode in the 2021 Adventures with Andy Halloween Mega Adventure. Already? I know, right? It seems like we just started working on this. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I guess so. So yeah, just a regular normal hand is not going to work. That is not sufficient for spooky season. So what if we take this hand and we turn it into a skeleton hand? and have it holding up the lantern. I mean, okay, it, it doesn't have a body to hold yeah. it, so we're probably going to have to mount it to this post. Yeah, but what if we made it, I don't know, add a plaque so that it looked a little, you know, more like it. Sure. There you go, look at that. Oh, like, yeah, it's yeah. crooked and everything. It's, oh, it's wonky and everything. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's go toss in the front yard. Too. All right, we're good. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Bye, all. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the final episode in the 2021 Adventures with Andy Halloween Mega Venture. Every year, Chad and I do one big build where we add something to our Halloween decorations for our yard. And this year, as you just saw, we're going to make a creepy skeleton hand holding a lantern mount it to this post and stick it in our yard. We've got, this is just a decorative metal lantern. Um, it is white and it's not going to stay that color because that is not the color that we want it to be. This is a, an artist's mannequin hand. We're going to first decide how we want to position this for it holding the lantern. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some plaster cloth that we're going to wrap around and bunch up on it to give it more of a bony look. Um, and then we'll see about painting it. Um, we're going to try to make it look like old bone. Now for the sleeve, because you know, the Grim Reaper, ghastly skeletons, they have that spooky drapey cloak sleeve. We have a couple of options. This is just some brown fabric that I've got, or these are just some leather scrap pieces that we picked up from an upcycling artist supply store in our area called Reconsidered Goods. And we've got a variety of colors, brown, brown black, brown, brown, brown. tan, darker tan. You can see what I mean, but it's, it's just crap. First things first, we're going to get some paint on that plaque and then I'm going to tape up the glass for the lantern and paint some paint on it. So Chad has expertly spray painted the lantern. It is a much better color for Halloween, don't you think? So now we need to decide what position we want the hand to be in when the skeleton's holding the lantern. Now we had discussed, like, if I as a person was picking this up, I'd pick it up like this, right? So that is one option. This is an option. I just, I really do like the idea of it going like this. And it can rest on the thumb here, I guess, like that. Yeah. I mean, if you're fine with resting on the thumb, then yeah, we can do that. Because the thumb is not going to turn down to let it go. All right, now we just have to turn this into bones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we don't really have anything we can carve this wood out with. 
that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. To be able to just carve here, 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 and along here. Got that exacto knife. You have fun with that. There you go. There you go. I will go inside and get back to work editing video. Mm -hmm. um, our deadline is Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Which year? This year. Oh. Okay. Since we don't have any way to carve this, and apparently Chad's not going to use this little tiny exacto knife to carve with, which is probably the best. I do not want you to maim yourself. I would just put this way right here. Um, then what we have to do is we have to build it up with the plaster cloth. Have you ever used this stuff? Nope. Yeah, neither have I. Neither of us knows how this works. This should be fun. Now that we have decided the position that we want our hand to be in, we need to lock these joints in place. Mm -hmm so that they don't move on us while we're putting the plaster cloth on. And for that, we're going to use some Gorilla Glue. Now you saw about how well things went for me using Gorilla Glue on the Haunted House paint off. So I am going to pass that over to Chad. Oh, okay. And I'm going to let him do it with the hope that he will be less likely to glue all of his fingers together like I did. <laughs> Just these fingers. I think, just looking at it, uh -huh. if we put glue in the joint there. That's what I'm figuring. That would hopefully hold everything. Yeah. I'm not going to be overly concerned if it oozes out a little bit since we're going to cover it, I guess. Yeah. And then nothing else, paint it. Mm hmm. Okay. Now that just needs to dry. Did you glue your fingers together, Chad? So what we're wanting to do is use these plaster cloth strips right now to build up the knuckles, the end of the bones. Not over the knuckle, but either side of it. And then we'll go over the whole thing. So Chad is cutting out little quarter inch strips. And I'm gonna put them on here as best I can.
right. I think that's got it as bad as good as we can get it for tonight. So we are going to let this dry overnight and then come out and see what we can do about filing and sanding it down to take it to the next level of awesomeness. And then we will paint it and move on from there. <laughs> I'm messy. I made a mess. Yeah. It does. It's been 24 hours, mm -hmm. more or less. It seems to be dry. So now we need to smooth it out and try to do some sanding and carving work to accentuate some of the places that really get kind of lost when I put the plaster cloth on, like right here between these two mm -hmm. parts of the bone, um, got built up a little bit too much here as well, here and, and stuff. Um, try to get more definition between these bones here. So it looks less like tendons on the hand, which yes, that's really pretty much what it is. Um, but you know, less like that, more like bone, just smooth out generally round here and stuff. And for that, we need to sand it. Since I'm the one who got all messy yesterday, you've seen the plaster cloth, Chad's the one who's going to get all messy today by doing the sanding. He's got sandpaper. This is a little bottle of just plain tap water to see if we can do wet sanding just to keep some of the dust down. We do have masks, respirator masks, because um, even though plaster cloth is non-toxic, anything that creates dust of any sort, you don't want to breathe it in. It's just not great for you. So without further ado, Chad, I turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah. And while he does this, I am probably going to head back inside and do some editing. Okay. Because I still got videos to edit. Probably not going to hear me very well because of the mask. So let's go ahead and get started here. So it doesn't look like the plaster of Paris here has fully cured yet. It's only been 24 hours. Um, so what I'm going to do is instead of sanding it, um, which is really not working that well, I'm going to use a couple of tools to try to sculpt it a little bit better and hopefully cut down on the amount of sanding that needs to be done later on. Stay tuned. We did let this dry another 24 hours and things do seem much more solid and, e and so I hope they'll be easier to sand. So we're going to go ahead and hit it with some small files and then with any luck put some paint on it.
Well, this is looking pretty smooth. We don't want it perfectly smooth because after all this is a probably centuries old hand that's been through a lot of abuse. Maybe at one point it was served, even served as a hand of glory or something like that. Uh, probably tried to catch one or two sword blows without um, the proper equipment. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna paint it up to try to bring out some more detail. And to start it out, I'm going to put some black paint all over it, just to serve as a, both a primer and a base coat to help really deepen the shadows. pretty smooth and it's the paint is nice and dry so now comes the time to use the other paint browns and whites and grays and some greens to build up a nice decrepit bone look to do that I'm going to use the airbrush which should hopefully make things go a little bit faster but I'm still getting the hang of the airbrush so we'll see how everything goes and hopefully it turns out good We do want to age this lantern some. It looks it looks gorgeous with the spray paint, but it's been out for a while in the weather. You know, it can't look this pretty. So I am going to touch up the paint on the ring. That was just really hard to get spray painting it. So I'm going to touch that up with just a little bit of black, and then I'm going to go over it, the whole lantern in places with some of this Citadel Nihiloc Oxide paint. This is what I use to create the verdigris effect on the copper roof for my haunted house in that video. And yes, I know this means that the ring is gonna be black when everything else is copper. That's fine. I'm good with that. Good enough for art. Mm -hmm. Also need to add some aging to our plaque that the hand's getting it mounted to and since we painted it black we thought we'd go for kind of a rusty metal effect and I'm gonna see if I can find a little blaze here on my wet palette to put some of this some of this army painter dry rust effect paint I'll put it next to the copper and the red if it gets mixed in with some red that's fine Right? Mm -hmm. Or the copper. Now, I've never used this one before, so it should be interesting to try. Any tips on putting this on, Chad? Mm, no. I don't use it that much. Oh, okay. Just everything's got to be kind of aged. It's been out here for centuries, right? Mm hmm.
I think it looks good. Are you pleased with it, Chad? I think it looks good. Now we just need to let this dry and then we can see about mounting the skeleton hand onto our plank. To mount this and to make sure that we drill the holes into the plaque and the hand in the same place, we're gonna cut a template out of cardboard. And I'm just going to put the hand on here. Trace around it really good. With a pencil. All right, there we go. Now we just need to cut that out and we can mark on here. Now looking at the bottom of this, I think we're gonna want what, a hole here and a hole here. We wanna avoid this pen. And obviously we can't go straight in the center because that's where that spring is. Looking at the hand here and there, I'm thinking It's good. It looks good. All right, so that should be that should give us a pretty decent place um, with enough area to avoid that spring in the center. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Just tape this down. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this tape in half lengthwise. <laughs> so that we can tape this down and it doesn't move. You think that's a good placement? Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It looks about center. Now before we take this off. And yes, the hole's been thrown the other side. That's good. That way we can line it up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take this off. Move this to the side. Now we need the really tricky part is we have to drill the holes into the hand. We don't really have anything that will hold the hand. So I think it's just going to need to be you. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to brace it really good. Wait, let's go this way with it. Ready? Yep. First one. Yep. Okay. Did not see that coming. There we go. We got a tiny bit of a hole. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to go with a smaller drill bit. Ready? Yep. Much, much better. All right, now, we just have to put these two. Come on up. Oh, the, the way to do that. I didn't even look to see which direction we had. Did they, did they work? No, I didn't look to see if we had, which direction we had the hand. Yeah. We're gonna have to hope. Fingers crossed, everyone, fingers crossed. Well, I mean, the plaque can be oriented either way, really. Well, right, but if the hand's like this. Yeah. Right, so we're going to start by drilling through here until the screw comes just out the other side. Ready? Yep. That's it. A little more. A little more. A little less. That's it. That's good. good. All right. And yes, I screwed up his paint job. You'll we will that. touch that up. We will touch that up. I think that's got it. Okay, starting with the one at 
closest to you just so mm -hmm. you know where the pressure's coming from. What? It just does not want to go any further. Yeah. We needed something to mount it onto the post yeah. with anyway. Now before we can mount this, we need to touch up this paint where I messed it up and then coat the whole thing, the hand and the plaque both with some varnish just to protect it from the elements and to seal that paint in because as you can see it will just peel right off. Well now we're going to put the mounting bracket on here so that we can slot the hand and the plaque right onto this post without permanently attaching the plaque in hand to make storage easier and if you want to repurpose this post. Yeah. For doing that, we're using the keyhole hanger. Okay, so we do not want to make this post a permanent feature in our yard by sinking it in concrete or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of those metal fence posts like this that you use to hang up snow fencing and other temporary fencing because they're easy to sink in the ground and we can just screw them to two sides of this post to get a pretty stable construct. And we're doing it on two sides that face like this, right? Instead of two that are opposite each other so that it will help keep it from falling over both in the X and the Y axis. That's ready to go in the ground now. Yep. We just have to put the finishing touches on everything. On everything and we can get this in the ground. Yep. For the sleeve, I decided let's just go ahead with this fabric. To give us sort of the old worn look that we're looking for with this, I'm just gonna cut a notch here at the top. I fold it in half. Um, and cut a notch here at the top. And now I'm going to hand this over to Chad. You wanna give it a shot? You can give it a shot. I can do it, but I thought I'd let you be involved. Okay. And just gonna let him Tear it in half. You ready? Yep. That tore much more evenly than we might have hoped. <laughs> well, it still, it gives that ragged edge too. that we're not going to get from cutting it. Now, I've got the hand here. Mm -hmm. And can we just take a moment to pause and marvel at this incredible paint job that Chad did on this? I mean, yeah, I'm the one who put the plaster cloth on, but he came out here and he sanded and filed and used sculpting tools to give it just an incredible amount of definition and then went over that with paint. And seriously, y'all, this is fantastic. You did an incredible job, honey. Thank you. I still cannot find my grommet pliers, but I did find this. This is an awl. So I'm just going to use this to punch some holes in here and then I will use this shoelace and thread it through and that will give us a, a really rough kind of join. So just going to punch it in and I might have to do this one at a time. I don't know if two is going to be okay. Got that on there. That gives me a decent hole, but I can fit this through. I am gonna first punch the holes all the way down, though, so, before I do that. And I do wanna make sure I'm not getting too close to the edge. All right, so now I'm just gonna thread this through here. And 
if I need to go back and widen the holes, I can do that. And yes, my original plan was to do this on a sewing machine, but that was before we were fostering the tripod cat. Right, Chad? That's right. That's right. And you know what? Priorities, people. Cats take priorities to crafts, at least in our house. All right, let's turn this and see how that looks. And that's really not bad for a rough join. Very rustic look, which is what we're wanting. Now, if we wanted to, we could pull these further apart, like it's falling apart. Loosen up those laces a bit. And there, now that is a pretty cool effect, I think. go. Rough sewn, looking rough like it's supposed to. We can tighten them if we want a neater effect. Now the only other thing that we need to do is attach some Velcro to this so that we can attach it to the mounting board so that it won't fly away, fly away in the wind, which I'm sure you can hear in the background. And we do have some Velcro here. It is heavy duty and it is much longer strips than what we need. So I'm just going to cut these down. Just right on here with it. And then the other side, we'll peel this back and attach that to the mount mounting board. If this doesn't seem to want to stay, if the adhesive is not quite strong enough, um, then I could stitch it to the fabric and we can put like a small finishing nail through the one that's on the mount mounting board. What you got there, Andy? Cinder block. Cinder block. It's only carrying one at a time. I had to save some for you. Dramatic action shot. <laughs> She's running in slow mo. I can't keep up. <laughs> for a little bit of extra stability, we picked up some center blocks and we're actually going to sink the post down with it in one of the openings to the cinder block and then we're going to put the other cinder blocks around it fill them in with these stones and we picked a spot in the yard that seems solid and level but it's been raining a lot like since spring mm -hmm. so the ground is really soft and we're just a little concerned that even these posts we've put on it won't be quite enough to keep it from falling over mm -hmm. Positions the there we go. Right. Yep. Stand up here. Okay. Now the other way to do it would be to put the post in the ground first and then screw them into the. Yeah, that's what I think we might need to do. What do you think? What do y'all think? <laughs> this is a workout. Mm -hmm. Over here, then. Yeah, over here. Okay. This is my, my work.
workout, baby. Not like that, you think? You said, you turn. Think that'll be the most sturdy? I think so, yeah. Okay. Like this. Velcro so it stays on, but we can take it off to run it through the wash. Look at that, clean glass. I know, it's so pretty. Mm-hmm. didn't realize it was several centuries old, would you? No. Yeah, I think we're good there. What'd you think? I think it turned out really good. I'm very pleased with this. This is one of my favorite builds that we've ever done. I hope y'all had fun watching us build this spooky, creepy, skeletal hand lantern. And I really hope you had fun this whole week celebrating spooky season with us leading up to today, Halloween. You have a wonderful day, have a fantastic Halloween, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Bye everybody. Say bye Chad. Bye everybody. Bye, happy Halloween.